five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Strange Planet Podcast. Yeah, Strange Planet Podcast. Is like it a theme song? I know, we do need a theme song. <laughs> Yeah. Corey and Anthony <laughs> talking about stuff, talking about stuff. Welcome, everybody, to the Strange Planet Podcast, the strangest of all the podcasts on the strangest of all the planets. We are your hosts. This is Corey James. And I'm Anthony Zevitek. Do I have It was to... really fast. I was like, I wasn't here. Like, oh. I'm just usually stutter through it. That time you were like, <laughs> I'm on it. On it. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for listening and watching. Spanx. Spanx. Spanx a lot. How's your week, bud? Not too shabby. Nice. Getting cold. Getting cold. I know. It's get, It's like that, uh, I don't like the cold at all. And I don't know why I still live in this area. I, say, I thought you loved the cold. No, I used to love the cold whenever it made me money. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I make money regardless of what the yeah, weather's okay. like, so, so no, more cold. no more cold. No more cold. We got a, we have a, a it's a, a nice show today. It is a nice it's show. like a, it's really slick. I've been uber pumped. I know. Nice show today. Uh, Threw a couple of little things on there just yeah. because they're stuff that I do want to talk gotta about. Got to talk about stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, really quick, uh, in place of our comics, I want to talk to you about some comics that I saw this week. Uh, I was out in Somerset and uh, I found an antique store. Okay. So I go in, wasn't expecting to see anything cool. Like, as soon as you walk in, in the front case, they have, like, seven or eight comics. Legit. I was going to say, so you know. They're amazing. Good, they're like, only a couple. Nova number one. Damn. $40. Okay. Like, the price tags on these were insane. Like, great, like, legit issues of Spider-Man. And then I go to the back of the antique store. A whole nother section of comics. A million Spider-Man, Daredevil, Punisher, everything from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Mm -hmm. And then I go to another section, and they have like eight long boxes full of comics. You I didn't get shit. I didn't get. I didn't have my. I didn't have any money. I didn't have oh, any. Yeah, I didn't have any I money. Been stealing something. We're <laughs> <laughs> stuffing some comics down my. Pants. I can't do that when I'm working. Um, but uh. I guess I shouldn't have even been in in an antique store while I was working. There's no business there. But me well, and Jess are. It is now. Nope, but it is now. It is now. It's all right, because it'll, right. it'll, it was picking up for mine. There anyway, we go. So. We'll be fine. Um, me and Jess are heading back there this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, it's yeah. always fun when you when you find one like out there. Yeah. And you're like, like, fuck, I'm definitely making the trip back here. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and, like I was not, like, of all the places in all the world, I was not expecting to find comic books at this really crazy antique store. But they had amazing things. Like, they had pint glasses not even like pint glasses, like glasses from like the 80s with like pro wrestling on it and nice. superheroes and like legit, like it wasn't like a re, like, like a, original. Like a, yeah, it was an original. Was a and original. like, huh, I was shocked, blown away, crazy. So next. I ordered X Men Black. Nice. It shipped on Monday. Issue one? I ordered all three of them. Oh, sick. There you go. <laughs> There's only two of them haven't released yet, so I just ordered all three that were out. Right? Did you pre-order the other two? No. No. I, I figured I'd see, see how, how these you three feel? are. Yeah, that's a good idea, because you're going to well, you're gonna get um, Emma, Magneto. Mm -hmm. Magneto, Mystique, and, and Mojo. Mojo. That's right. Emma's the last one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So if I dig on those and I dig on the apocalypse story yeah. enough to want the last two, I do kind of want Juggernaut no matter what. But. Yeah, that Juggernaut's like so underrated as far as a yeah, villain badass. goes. He's badass, but he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Yeah. Anyway, but I'm definitely gonna do a review on that. Good, I'm pumped. Can't wait. Um, we're gonna switch the show up today. Uh, we usually start with Marvel news, but we have so much Marvel news today. That we're going to do some DC news first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, had a quite the interesting picture. Uh, <laughs> interesting to say interesting. the least. Uh, from the upcoming season of Gotham, where it showed Bane, or the Gotham Bane. As yeah, what it were they to be. call their interpretation Bane. of Bane. Yeah, it's definitely an interpretation, yeah. and that, and I understand what Gotham is. Yeah. We've all come to know that they play fast and loose right. with the material right. of what Batman is. Exactly. 
And that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine cool. with me. Right. There's a lot of stuff that they've done right. right. Yeah. And some stuff that they've done wrong. Really quick, what are some of your they've done right things? Um, I loved Scarecrow. Yeah. I loved... Uh, I'm hit or miss on Joker. I don't really... Yeah. Knew, I never really got what was going on. Like, yeah, at first, I was like, oh, this, that's Joker. Like, yeah. it, they're building that up. That's going to become Joker. That's right. really cool. And then... He died. He died. And then his twin right. brother right. was the Joker. Yeah. And then, but he wasn't really the Joker. Right. Yeah, I never really got that whole thing. I thought they got, um, I thought they got Fish Mooney right. Yeah. I thought they got. Uh, Grundy's pretty cool. I thought they got the Riddler right. Yeah. They got uh, Poison Ivy right. I, I'm not digging on the young. But it, younger but, like, ones, but, like, they, but then something happened to her, and she was like an adult. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, once it was, once it was like, um, Barbara and her, yeah. and like all, and like Catwoman and all, then like yeah. became like the weird like crew running Gotham. Yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah, she wasn't a um, chunky little redhead anymore. Yeah. She was an adult. <laughs> and what else did they? I thought they got right. I thought they. Oh, the Mad Hatter. I thought they got him spot on correctly. Balloon Man in the first episode was yeah. pretty cool. There you go. Just to have a freeze. random ass. Freeze was pretty legit. Yeah. yeah Most they of they what they've of done stuff. has been good. But this, this is not good. I mean, I don't like, I'm not going to say it's not it's good. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. I haven't seen anything. So you don't know the, the context of it. We do right. know that it's not the Bane that we know. Right. It is a, a comrade of... Alfred's from the old days from the old days who got experimented on or something and then comes back for revenge or for so something weird but so it's, it's gonna heavily involve Alfred so it's like the Cobra Commander from the G.I. Joe it looks Cobra like movie. I know it looks it like it should be from G.I. Joe <laughs> like it looks like one of my action figures that I, I used know to yeah with. so it's Shane Black is playing Bane and uh so you got a you got a really skinny dude. Yeah, really I, skinny okay, dude. Okay, so right. I understand that what Bane is in certain stories is a scrawny little skinny dude. Right. Who pumps up? Yeah, who pumps up with right. poison and steroids and weird toxic stuff to make himself massive and overly strong and right. adrenaline driven. Right. But that's not what this dude is. This is a skinny dude wearing a padded shoulder suit. I know. It's like he's got a chest thing. That's not even to the the spray painted PVC pipes on his chest yeah. yet. I'm just talking about the actual trying to make him look big. Right. It looks like a skinny dude in a padded suit. Yeah. Like his lower half is still the same size as what it should be right. at the normal guy underneath the suit. But it looks like he's got shoulder pads yeah. on. Like, it's weirdly triangle. Right. But, yeah, then you got the chest piece yeah. that looks like a mess. I know. It looks like a, it, you know, and <laughs> maybe, see, I can't even say that with a straight face. Maybe it'll eventually get big kind of thing. Yeah, maybe he's just not all pumped up yet. Right. I don't know. I, I But I can't see, like, in that, in the Gotham kind of world. I can't see that happening. No. No, I, I think that's it. <laughs> like, they don't, they don't it. really do like a... It's not a heavily CGI'd television show. I mean, yeah, there's CGI. There has to be. Yeah. But it's not ultra heavy. No, no, no. no. Um, um, you definitely got some influences from the Dark Knight. Yeah. With the... You could see the little grill looking thing right. in front of his face. Um, yeah. But you got these weird like ear pieces I know. go up over. Yeah, I just... I, I've been looking at it and I just can't get down with it. I don't, I don't know. So then that brings us to our next question. Batman and Robin, The Dark Knight Rises, Gotham. Who's the best looking? Who's the best Bane? Who's the best Bane? We oh, don't know okay, how, the funny thing is the right, best looking Bane is, from Batman, is from Batman and Robin. Exactly. But but that's the worst of the pro, the movies or Right, because he was so it was uh he wasn't as smart as Bane actually is. Like Well Bane that's not even that. The movie was just bad. Oh yeah, well the movie was bad. The movie was bad. Right. 
I was uh, down with the skinny dude getting pumped up and just breaking walls and shit. That was I cool. Know. I'm, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it would have been cooler to have a little bit of dialogue with him, but right. the the era we were in with movies right there yeah. was I, like full on campy. I think Tom Hardy's got the best pain. Oh, yeah. And I think it will be that way until something better comes along, of course. That's... Until like Bane comes out of nowhere and like Titans or something. That'd be cool. Which I'd be down we with already that. got Batman showing up, so right. why wouldn't we get some villains dropped Effing here and there? Batman. You need to put a fucking cork on that character for 10 years. Honestly. Yeah, they, uh, DC announced that Affleck is gone. Is gone. And they are casting for a new Batman. Who do you think should get it? Uh, I have no idea. That's what that's what everybody's on the internet's going about. Depends on what era you're going with. But well, it's definitely going to be a younger. Okay, well then my pick doesn't work. It's probably going to be based on Batman Year One. Well, then my pick doesn't work at all. Because they're coming off of Gotham. This is the final season of Gotham. Yeah. They're they reamping the franchise. How they just again. give that kid a, a, the damn shit? Right, right? He deserves it. I know. Guarantee. They already said in the last episode he's going to Batman put up. the cape on. So why wouldn't you I give know. the poor kid? The poor just kid just give the gave kid. you like 10 years of his life know, becoming Batman, just... and now you're going to take it away from him. We sat there and watched that kid fucking whine and cry and bitch and moan and grow up, and now he's going to become Batman, and then we get a whole new Batman. So anyway, all right. Well, speaking of DC... Bring, bring Joseph Gordon-Levitt in for it. I know. Like, bring like bring somebody cool. And I, I you know... I'm not that familiar with young actors in you know these days. I'm not sure who like the the top young actors are, so I could not really even begin to wildly speculate. But you yeah, the dude that plays Cyclops in the new Ty Sheridan yeah. wouldn't be a bad young that's, Bruce Wayne. You know that's actually I'm going with Ty Sheridan. He's got like that rich boy. Yeah, like, he's got that nice face. Right. And you want to punch? Yeah. Yeah. But he could he could throw down. Yeah. I mean, he was good in Ready Player One. He's he's good yeah. as Cyclops. You know who else would be good? Uh, Taron Egerton, who uh, is from the Kingsman franchise. Uh, oh yeah, okay. He'll be playing. I can see uh, that. He'll be playing Elton John in the uh, upcoming Rocket Man movie he's next year. He's got a year. rich. Swagger yeah, he's got kind of that around. swaggery kind of thing. And who says Batman can't be British? <laughs> I guess a lot of people. I don't know. Uh, speaking of DC, Warner Brothers, whole big franchise. There was a big announcement made. Yeah. The other day. Uh, Wonder Woman. 2020 now. Big old push. Yeah. Like, five, whoa. seven, five, seven months? Is... Yeah. All right. So it's actually, which is weird because it's being pushed back to its original release date. Oh, that was what the, that was the yeah. original? Okay. Yeah. I saw a tweet from Gal Gadot saying, super excited to have Wonder Woman 1984 release on the original date it was intended. Hmm. Because they, a lot, a lot has went down with Warner Brothers. Yeah. In the past couple of years. Yeah. So you have to think like, they were amped for everything that they were doing. Right. They had Justice League coming out. They knew they were going to do. And Wonder Woman did great. They mm -hmm. announced they were doing Wonder Woman two. They probably wanted to get it out as fast as they possibly could. Right. So they probably moved the date up. Yeah. Now things are kind of not, not kinda rocky, like, but they're they're missing a lot. Well, that's the thing. They're Justice slate. League's gone. Right. They're banking on Aquaman doing well. Yeah. They don't want to rush out their one product that, that is, is good. Good, right? So it's not a bad decision. It's not a bad decision. Do you think reshoots? But it is a big or... decision. That's the thing. That big of a of a pushback, like that's probably a lot of reshoots. Or are they? Or, or are they just a lot distancing of... it from Aquaman? And I was gonna say there was probably a lot of film stuff in there connecting it with the rest of the universe uh, because we already came off of wonder Woman, you know we already came off of justice league and batman v superman and aquaman yeah. was supposed to be part of all that and yeah. then they obviously probably took most of that stuff out of aquaman right so most of that stuff probably had to be taken out of i would i would i'm interested to see like whenever wonder woman comes back into the modern day because of course we're now in 1984 so we're going back in time again but when she comes well, back between. When she comes back to the present, are they even going to mention Bruce Wayne? Is there going to no. be anything? They can't now. I know. Well, they could, they but could. they'd have to use the new actor, and then right. that would just be weird. Yeah. Crazy weird. 
I'm excited yeah. though. I'm still excited. Yeah, and it's not. It, there's. It's not a bad thing at all. Do you think that? I, I mean, because what was the? What's I forget what the push was. I forget like when to when. And I'm well, like, it was like summer. It was of like, 2019. It was, yeah, it was and spring. now it's like May or what is it? 2020. It's like spring now. That's 2020. A wrong account. So it's. It's like yeah, it's moving yeah, around. It's definitely a big push. Let's see here. Blah blah blah. Okay. Um. It was previously set to open November 1st, 2019, and is now June 5th, 2020. Yeah, so... That is big. That is a big push. Yeah, that is really big, and, uh... I think people are waking out because that's like a dark... That's Dark Phoenix push. Yeah. Like, that's not just like, oh, that's not a Hellboy push from February to April. Right. I'm just looking at that. (laughs) It's garbage man. Man. Garbage bane right trash there. Trash man. Yeah, trash bane right there. Uh, anyway. He seriously looks like he crawled out of a fucking trash I know. It, it, <laughs> it looks, looks like a garbage like, disposal. Like, you know, it, it looks like uh, Shredder after the first Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah, right? Crazy. The, uh, ugh, gross. Um, is Warner Brothers eventually going to abandon... Babies! They're babies! Ah, uh, sorry, I just could not think of what he yelled, and then it just popped into my head when he comes busting out of the garage and he's pissed off because he just made a bunch of mutant babies. Fucking Bebop and Rocksteady. No! Toka and Razor. Oh, that's right. Jeez. That's right. No, you're right. You're right. Thinking of the other Ninja Turtles. Ugh. Crazy. Um... Is Warner Brothers going to abandon all hope? No, I think they're just pushing for this single movie thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with all the stuff that's been leaked about uh, the Joker this past week, right? I, it's insane how much stuff is getting let loose from I the know. Joker movie. Did you see that there was a a Batmobile? Yeah. From the 60s era Batman. It wasn't on set. That's right. the thing. Everybody kept saying it was on it's set. On its way. It, it's on it was its driving. way. It was on the street out front. Right. No one saw it go in. Nope. No one saw it come out. Nope. They just, could it be a coincidence? Yes. Could it though? And if it's not, what the hell would that mean? Isn't, and the, see that's another thing, like, the Are they Joker, gonna go for like a meta thing? The Joker movie is supposed to be set in the 80s. Yes. So why Plus well, that's what uh, everybody's talking about, them maybe trying to push, like, a Deadpool meta-type thing, where, like, no, the I Batman TV show no. exists in the world, no, I don't want and that. maybe Joaquin's character gets the idea of Joker from the TV show, and no. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it was just driving past the set. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe they just had it out there because it was the whole right. thing to, you know, to get people talking, because I don't see that. If yeah. anything, bust out the Burton Batmobile, because that's a sick-ass Batmobile. Yeah, that doesn't match up with the timeline either. I know. Well, that's well, 80... 89. 89, yeah, so... Yeah, so anyway. It's not like real world years count in movies. They don't. Thank you, Spider-Man they Home... Don't. Thank you, Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> Fucking eight years in the future. Anyway. I think DC is panicked. <laughs> and they really? might... And what... See, and that's another thing I was wondering. What else is set to relate... To release... In early November of 2019, are we? Is there a big Marvel movie coming out then? Is is there something that's coming out that they were like, "Oh shit, we can't do. We'll just fucking no. get our asses kicked." And then early June is huge for movies these days. Mm-hmm. So that's great for Wonder Woman. But like I said, what's Marvel got planned? Well, June of 2020, there's definitely gonna be something big. Actually, you know out. what? I think there's a hole in that area right now from where Guardians yeah, but they're 2 they're going to drop something. Yeah. We're going, going to, to get something. a Doctor Strange 2 or something big. I hope so. I can't wait for Doctor Strange 2. I can't wait for Infinity War. Speaking oh, yeah. of Infinity War, we are you two Avengers weeks, 4. Avengers 4. Annihilation. We're 2 weeks away from our Avengers 4 episode. Count them down. 2 beeps. weeks, baby. Count them down. Um let's move on. <laughs> Okay. Something came out Friday. Is that where we're at? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we can talk about that first. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we had some other things happen. Yes. On the old Netflix Marvel Yeah. Front. So we're talking Marvel news. Marvelian. 
Marvelian. Marvelian? Hmm. Anyway. Uh, it was announced this week, after last week it was announced that Iron Fist has been canceled by Netflix. It was announced this past week that Luke Cage has suffered the same fate, canceled by Netflix. All right, so I watched an interesting video done by What Culture today. Okay. Kind of gauging what's the future of Marvel Netflix. Apparently, the first two seasons, or the first, each first season of Iron Fist and Luke Cage did great social media wise. And that's, Netflix doesn't release their viewing numbers, they right. don't release their ratings, and that's whatever. So you can kind of gauge it off of social media interaction. Each show had about 100,000 comments, likes, shares, whatever, whatever have you. After season two for each show only had it in the, about the ten of, tens of thousands. So automatically you see a decline in percentage of what at first people talking about right. it on social media. So that could have led to this. Also, I've heard that Luke Cage season three was canceled because of creative differences. Okay. Between... Right. Studio, Netflix, director, blah, 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 whoever. Yeah. I read an article. It was really funny. Friday, we had, we did the podcast last week. We talked about Iron Fist getting canceled. Yes. I read an article where they did an interview with the, not CEO of Netflix, but like the coordinator of whoever makes the decisions of what's going to come out on Netflix, what's going being made, what's getting canceled. Okay. And they asked him, if people should be worried about the Marvel uh, Netflix universe yeah. because of Iron Fist getting canceled. And he straight up said, there is nothing to worry about. We are very happy with how Luke Cage, <laughs> Jessica Jones, and Daredevil are doing. That was Friday. Yeah. And then literally, what was it, Saturday? Saturday, yeah. They announced that they were canceling Luke Cage. Yeah. And then there was another article s stating why they were canceling Luke Cage saying that they had an entire script written for season 3 right and they could not come to an agreement on what they wanted from season 3 and they couldn't come to an agreement with the director who already had had the script and what he wanted to do right so they canceled it <sighs> now <laughs> Poor Mike Coulter. Yeah, that sucks for him. Because he's fucking Luke Cage. Yeah, it does suck for him. He had a baby, like, yesterday. Oh, good for him. He he posted on Twitter. He said, you know, thanks for ever, all the well wishes yeah. about, you know, me getting canceled. Good for him. But I just, and he posted a picture with his daughter. Said he just had a baby. I was nice. like, oh, that's cool. I mean, that's fantastic. One bad thing, one really good thing. So. I bet he took his wife out for coffee <laughs> <nine> months ago. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> yeah, Jessica. Yeah. Hey, but, all right. So... Here's you... here's a serious question. Okay. Do you think it's Thanos? Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw a meme and I was like, holy shit. Thanos two remain. Snapped away. <laughs> two got canceled, two remain. The balance, man. Would, yeah. Wouldn't it be crazy if they were like, oh, we got to do it. And then they brought him back. People are saying that they're going to bring they're going to bring back uh, Luke Cage for a season one of heroes for hire yeah that's i've heard a lot of the heroes for hire so they're gonna they're i no, don't think I've this heard, is a i don't think this is a stunt i've heard heroes for hire disney streaming service oh really yeah that would make more sense yeah because netflix is not going to backtrack on what they on what they just did they're not going to do it. no it's not a it's not a publicity stunt right the whole snap snapping right if they want to do that we wouldn't have seen luke cage season two we wouldn't have seen iron fist season two that's true they came out after right right what are your you are you worried about daredevil and jessica jones i, I think we already came to an agreement that this was an end yeah. we, we were coming to an end before yeah. we knew that luke cage was canceled right um after watching this past friday i feel like they tied it up in a nice neat little bow and yeah. it was it was an ending yeah uh, but for them to say that they're definitely doing another season of jessica jones it's a I, little strange i thought see i thought of course iron fist was the weakest show but i thought jessica jones was weakish like the show was weakish it shit. was okay yeah well look at that face that you're making but it wasn't, that. it wasn't it great. wasn't iron fist bad i well yeah iron fist bad was bad right luke cage Great. 
I half of it. Half, half of the half, season one. Exactly. Half of season one. Blah blah blah. Those um, shows could have been ten episodes. Ten, eight to fine. ten episodes. Eight, eight would have definitely. Eight been would fine. have been so sweet. Right. Um, Daredevil. I'm glad they gave us another thirteen. I know. That's the one show that deserves thirteen. You gotta, you know, you gotta. There's so much going on. Right. We'll get to that later. We're coming on it. Uh, we're coming on. We're it. coming on. It. Uh, yeah, I am honestly. I'm um, Disney is because the Disney Netflix relationship is coming to an end. So I was thinking about that. Yeah. When I was watching Daredevil season three, and it came, I came to a conclusion that, and this is just me thinking of how things probably work, they probably signed a contract for those characters. Yeah. Not for a time limit. Right. So when they finally... um, The contract that they signed for their movies, for the MCU movies, is not the same thing that they... The one for the, the shows was way before. Right. So when that contract ends at the end of this year... And all those, and they stop dropping all their movies on there, and they start their streaming service. Yes. I don't know if that means that Netflix can't keep making the ones that they have. Interesting. I don't think that they, they're not. I think. I don't that, think they're going to just stop Punisher. I uh, ooh, see that we have still yet to see Punisher season two. Right. Fuck. And they're filming. I mean, I don't. They're probably done now. They were see, filming. I think. You rat. You do your Punisher season two. You do your Jessica Jones season three, three, I guess. Even though season two just came out this year, mm-hmm. fuck. And you maybe, I know Daredevil's wrapped up, but you kind of, you kind of want to do a season four. You definitely could do a season four, yeah. but if they decide not to, there wouldn't be a right. Vincent D'Onofrio came out in an interview and said that season four could happen. So well, well, that's coming. At from, least the actors are open. That's coming it. from the Kingpin, right? So. Um, if the actors are open to it, then I don't see why Netflix I, wouldn't I drop want, another moneymaker. I want next year, because the streaming service for Disney won't be out until late next year, late 2019. Right. I want middle of next year, everything Netflix Marvel to be wrapped. Disney, just give it all back to Disney. Disney, buy it back. I don't care. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how that works either. Right. If they have a contract for... A time limit if they have a contract for those characters being Netflix series exclusives. But it's amazing, like, and that's another interesting thing that we've seen is that Fox, no matter how much they fucked up the Fantastic Four, they still held the rights. Right. So Netflix, theoretically, I'm not sure what the contract. They still looks have like, Iron Fist. They could, yeah, they could cancel them and just hold the characters. Right. Now I want Disney streaming services shows. For these characters, Heroes for Hire, Heroes for Hire, and then a separate Daredevil show and a separate. You want Punisher another show. Daredevil show I, with Charlie Cox? I want the same characters. I want. You can't make a different show with the I, same character with the same actor. I, you totally could. How could you do I, that? I will act like it never happened. <laughs> this I, is the, one of the most me, brilliant I will, things we've ever gotten. I, I I will act like nothing ever happened. That's insane. That's Disney, insanity. I will act like nothing ever happened. If you can get me Charlie Cox, Mike Coulter, Mike Coulter, uh, Kristen Ritter, and I. I kind of want to say Finn Jones, but I kind of don't because I thought Finn Jones was so weak as Iron Fist. Yeah. But just give me those on the streaming service. And then you could have this cool fucking thing where you could bust them into the MCU movies. Nope. Huh? They're not going to do God it. Damn, I wish they would do that. Netflix I'm not is done the with... only way you're going to see. Well, Co- then fine. See well, Cox. Well, f- <laughs> <laughs> uh, then fine. Fine. Then I want new characters, but I want. Those characters in shows Could on the you Disney see th- if service. okay, so if if this cancels, if not cancels, but if they wrap everything and all those rights go back to Disney, don't you think Disney's going to push to make a Daredevil movie? They're not going to push to do yeah, a, no, another yeah, show. Yeah, no, I I agree because based on the popularity of the character right now, now that it's been done well, yeah, it is a popular character, right. They are probably itching to get more Dude. characters into the MCU on ground level. They like the ground level characters right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, and plus... Ant-Man. I mean, Ant-Man. Spider-Man. Guardians. Well, yeah. Guardians isn't a grounded. 
Yeah, true. Um, it's cosmic. Cosmic. Plus, we're also losing a lot of the grounded MCU. We're that's losing, why they're trying to build Ant Man and Wasp. We're losing because that's Iron our Man. smaller right. s- stories. You hey shit, man! You bring Daredevil, you introduce him into the MCU in like the third Spider Man movie. I would be like be fucking sick. okay with that. And then you have your villain, Kingpin, the villain. In a Spider Man movie. In a Spider Man movie. Teamed up with Daredevil. Teamed up with Daredevil. Ugh. For frack's sake, I hope that happens. Yeah, me too. On Friday. All right. Hey. We hit the halfway mark. We got it. It's time to go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, on Friday, we had Daredevil season three. I hope you guys binge the shit out of it because I did. I as much I, as I can binge, I, I, I know I, I am. It's it's hard for me to binge. I am. Uh, I, I, we can still talk about it, but you I, didn't finish it. Three episodes. Yeah, you I, didn't finish it. I thought I was going to be able to do it yesterday, you but didn't I was finish so it. I was so fried. I'm talking about the end. I don't care. I'm, I'm talking about to. the end. I want you to. No, because the ending is amazing, and you didn't see it now, and now I'm going to feel bad. No, nope, don't amazing. feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's my fault. Oh, it's my fault. I was, so I thought amazing. I was going to be able to do it yesterday when I got home, but I was home at like so, 10. And spoiler was, alert. Yeah. Spoiler on alert. On Daredevil Season 3. If you have not watched it, go watch it. It's completely yeah. available on Netflix, Netflix right now. Pause this, go watch it, and we'll see you in 13 hours. Right. Right. So it opens up. With the recap of kind of our what happened at the trail end of Defenders, because that was the last time we saw. Which I was really glad they did that. Yeah, because like Court was sitting right beside me. Yeah, she hadn't. I don't think she watched any of Defenders. Right. She probably watched maybe half of season two Uh, with me. So she was like, "Oh, what are you watching?" Here we go. Watch this. (laughs) Get caught up. Building fell. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. So here's my first problem. So a building falls on Daredevil, and somehow he gets shot out through a, a sewage pipe? Yeah. I was okay with that. You were okay with that? I didn't even think about I, that until right now, until you just said that. That never, not once did I ever go, hmm. And like how the, did he get out of that the building? How did he get... the, the building was in like the middle of the city, Isn't and he it ends called up... like Midtown or something? Yeah, or like, well, it was like Hell's Kitchen. Well, like the building had like a, a name that they kept oh, calling yeah, it. Oh, yeah, like, I forget. Um... But like, and then he, they had to get him out of there in some way that didn't involve any of the characters from I the know, defenders. I know, but just like, it wasn't. There was no explanation. It was honestly, it was and building the fall. Found him. Building fall sucked through time warp out of a drainage pipe. Oh, he says to the dude that finds him, father, whatever. Right, Mahone, but it's not him. He just right. so that guy so brings him to. Him to such and such to the orphanage where he was raised. Right. Which just so happens to be the church that he's been visiting the entire time? Yeah. Okay, I did not know, I know. ever See, know that I, that was the orphanage. Right, I, and I am... Which, good on the on the father for... Because he has been privy to the information that Matt Murdock is Daredevil, right? Right? Before this? Aren't I? It's unspoken. Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. he comes to him and tells him about everything that he's doing and confesses his sins. Right. So, yes, the dude knows what the, he's doing. He's yes. he's not stupid. Yeah. But he's never went, I'm there, though. Right. Okay. So then we get this amazing first episode. Dude, everything about him in the church, in the yeah. orphanage was what I wanted out of this I season. know. The, the torment. Yep. The, the, I'm fucking done with this bullshit. I'm, like, I don't, fuck God. Yeah. Fuck what I've been doing. Right? Fuck Matt Murdock. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, I like, loved it. That I was amazing. That it. was really cool. And he kind of gets taken under the wing by Sister Maggie. Yeah. And, and she, she knocked she, it out of the effing park. She, oh, dude, yeah. Who played that? Wasn't that Mackenzie Davis who played that role? I don't know her name. Um, but yeah, she was what I wanted out of Maggie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she made you feel like, uh, I don't know. She was, she was hard to get along with. She made it so that there was constant, yeah, bear, you know, banter between the two of them. She wasn't easy on him. Um, I don't even remember what happened in episode one. It was uh it was just it was honestly just him in the it was him in the church and, and we also got 
reintroduced to Wilson Fisk, Karen Page, Foggy Nelson. Where they we got caught up with all that. And the new FBI agent. Uh, Nadim. Nadim, right. Nadim. I loved his character. Yeah. I Such a cool new layer to keep something fresh going right. while everything else was still happening. Right, and it's and and I love like the whole uh, you know like um, yeah, you're doing good, uh, but your financial situation we can't promote you right like, now. We and, and fucked like, you over and put you in this situation, right. but we're not going to give you a promotion because of that situation yeah. to get yourself out of that hole. Right. It was. It was deep. Everyone in this season was in like. In between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. I loved the constant conflict right. that everybody was battling. Yeah. And he draws a, he draws the short end, the short straw, and he has to go see Wilson Fisk, which Wilson Fisk just got the news that if his, if uh, Vanessa comes back, she's going to fucking jail. Right. So now he wants to play ball. Make a little deal. And then Nadim ends up like a fucking... Gets fucked. Yeah. Like, the whole season. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just yeah. gets bent over the whole time. Yep. And, I, and his character really um, was... Him and Daredevil. Yeah. Those two parts of that whole season, I found myself... I love writing that makes me feel... Right the the disgust yeah. that that is that they feel like i was pissed halfway through the season i was actually pissed off like it made me pissed off because like what the fuck are these guys supposed to do yeah what are they every time they do something kingpin already is five steps ahead yeah. what the fuck am i supposed to do <laughs> like right. i'm just watching a tv show but i was literally feeling for them like yeah. i was pissed like this dude's trying to take care of his family yep but they're he's just and his wife is like the coolest chick ever. His wife is like, hey, we got no money, but I don't care. I still love you. And right. Like, Damn, that's cool shit. I thought... Foggy's all like slick now. I, you know, I, I love that. I love that. The, I, I think Foggy has had the best progression of a character, of a, of a secondary character. I do not like the Foggy Nelson character in the comic book. I Yeah, nobody and seems I to. And I love... The Foggy Nelson character that he has created in, right. in this show. Agreed. They did not just make him a fat pushover right. doofus right. Yeah. buddy. Like he actually made him a key character yeah. who keeps Matt somewhat on the path to of where he needs to be. Right. Uh I thought it was interesting. Uh I thought the Karen Page dynamic in the first couple episodes was good and then I started oh god that. they drowned me I in know. Karen Page I and I hated it and I, know. I was so wrong I thought didn't... like I thought like the first two episodes was good Karen Page and then after that it was like I fucking I now I remember why I hate this right lady. and they just pushed her in your face yeah. over and over and over right. again and then I was coming up so we got to talk about episode three yes because this is other than the final fight, which I don't even know if the final fight actually tops uh, episode three. Episode three of this season was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. That prison scene yeah. deserves an award. It yeah. deserves all the awards. <laughs> give it everything give it the, that you could possibly give, give it. The JD Power <laughs> Associates <laughs> Award. Give it to him. <laughs> Yeah. All of them. All Just of give them, them all, all the awards. Give them best pizza the, in Connellsville. The choreographer, the, the camera, the cinematography, yeah. the writing, yeah. everything about that episode had me screaming at the top of my lungs at the TV on yeah. the edge of my seat. Like, this is amazing. Right. I read a, a long... I sent you the article. I don't know if you right. read it yet. I have not. It's very good. Of the director talking about that scene. Ugh. You know what they did with that scene? What? That's a one shot. One camera. One shot, one camera, no cuts. Yeah, that's sexy. The dude had to go to Marvel Studios and ask for permission to shut down production of Daredevil for one whole day to do this one scene. He, they spent like 12 hours rehearsing mm. to do a 12-minute no-cut scene. <laughs> they figured out how to move the camera in ways so that the stunt double could come on yeah. and Matt could go Seamlessly. on and, without yeah. anybody knowing. Yeah. 
he was so worried. Is it your is it your best? It beat the hallway scene from um, season one. It beat the hallway scene. Did it? And beat, I didn't think anything could beat the hallway. Did it scene. beat the Did it beat the Punisher jail scene from season two? Oh yeah, that yeah. wasn't even that good. That was pretty. It good. was brutal, but it yeah, wasn't it was like there wasn't choreography. Uh, like so like just shoving like, mop handles into people's yeah. necks. Right. That's which is fine by me. But that prison scene. Yeah. The the trapped like. Of what the hell am I going to do? Not only what the hell am I going to do, but I shouldn't do anything because they think that I'm Foggy Nelson. They right. don't even know that that's Matt Murdock. Right. So everybody is now going to want to kill your best friend. Yeah. And they can see your face. Right. Freaking Kingpin's watching the entire time. <laughs> so now he knows, yeah. like, straight up, without a doubt, that yeah. you are who he thought you were. Yeah. <laughs> like, What did you think of Bullseye? He was great. I did. He was a great character, but he didn't need. The thing is, his. It was awesome seeing him use his skill. Yeah. Just like ripping that, things off of tables and yeah. walls and just throwing them, and you're right. like, did he like that introduction of Bullseye? Whenever Fisk is being yeah, transported, and he's shooting and, bullets off of walls yeah. to make it look like other people are shooting yeah. the cops. That was amazing. Yeah. But I did not care for the actor. I thought it was dry. I thought it was... Like, you could have a villain, and he doesn't have to be so robotic. Okay. Like... Yeah, well, I, I got you. He, but I mean, he, I, understand, I understand his character. Right. How he is an FBI... He's an FBI sniper, agent who's a agent. schizophrenic right. psychopath right. who was brainwashed his entire life to be perfect right. and neat and yeah. tidy and that keeps him they, straight they could have played that way more yeah they could have played that there's a lot going on in they that could show, have done so. like a they could have done a cool cut shot where it's like him taught in his mind talking to himself yeah, and yeah, like yeah. cool things like that you could have done that i liked the dynamic between him and kingpin i did too kingpin t like saying you know Sometimes you need to let loose a primordial scream. And then, yeah. like, the rest of the show, every time he was alone, he just screamed at the camera. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I dug the, ca the character, but they took a character from the, uh, the Mother Maggie story arc. Right. Who wasn't Bullseye. It was just a, a random uh, mental patient that yeah. Kingpin found right. to pose as Daredevil. Right. To try to take down daredevil right which i understand you want to pull this character in you're trying to things have to be changed so i understand that you combined the two because you were building towards him becoming bullseye yeah so i get it but yes if there if there's any characters in this season that i didn't care for he's my second after karen, like, page. karen page is obviously karen my first page. she has a whole episode i know when i got to karen the episode Karen, Karen. I'm like, please, for the love of God, let this be her death. And thought, she didn't die. I thought it was cool how they started exploring her background. I didn't. I thought that was even worse. I thought that was kind of interesting. I wanted to vomit the whole if, effing time. If they would have, honestly, if they would have done that in season one, it could have endeared. Well, they mention it. In they mentioned tiny it like throwouts. Yeah, this, this. She's like, my, I killed my brother. Oh, my dad hates me. Oh, I used to do bad things. Oh, I could have done without her in her underwear dancing, doing cocaine. Like I didn't, I did not need to see that. Yeah, she has not a great body anyway. I don't even, I don't even care if she did have a great body. She's I can't pale. stand her. She's all I pale and shit. I can't stand her. And like her hair, like blends in with her skin tone. Ugh. I'm She's sorry. Got moles that I'm hang sorry. off like one I'm, inch no, from I'm her sorry. body. I'm sorry. I hate to, I hate to speak like that about a woman's appearance. I really do. I do not like to do that. I'm sure she's a nice lady. She, I'm sure she is, but Karen Page fucking deserves it. And not even the actress, it's just the character. The character. The character. She's a shitty person. Yeah. All together. Yeah, and she killed Wesley. Fucking Wesley should still be with us today. Oh, when, when Poindexter says yeah. to Vanessa, I'm the new Wesley, and her face that she gives him, I'm like, that's how we all feel. I know. When Kingpin said... 
that you're kind of like my Wesley now. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, no. No, no, no. 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 Wesley was amazing. There's only one Wesley, and I will get a fucking full back tattoo of his face <laughs> as soon as I can afford it. I fucking will. Uh, yeah. So, um, Kingpin. Kingpin. What'd you think? I thought he was more... I thought, I thought he was more like chill this time. Yeah, like, that's the thing. I he feel, was like, I know what I'm doing. I've been yeah, in prison. Right. I got this shit figured out. Right. Well, that's the thing. That was, you know, that was the interesting thing. Like the dynamic of Kingpin has been growing in such an interesting way to where it's like first part of season one. He was so sporadic in season one. Right. Well, the first part of season one, he was the man behind the curtain. Right. Then the second part of season one, he was fucking right out there. But he's still chopping people's heads off with goddamn car doors. Right. And then season two, he's adjusting to being in prison and figuring out that, you know, world. Losing and then, his love. Right, losing Vanessa. And then season three, he's just hell-bent on As soon as he put that white jacket on, I'm yeah. like, this is Kingpin. You know what my he has a freaking secret under... His apartment lair, yeah. while the FBI is literally doing everything that he wants. Yep. Yeah. Right. Like, I tell you what, I it, it happened early in the series, but I think my favorite Kingpin scene was when the introduction of Kingpin when he's cooking his omelet in prison and he sits down. Quiet. And the whole prison just the goes whole silent. Yeah. Prison, like I was like, damn, that's cool. Yeah. Like that's what's like that's very cool. Like he set up his own. His own shiv thing yep. so that he could get out. Yeah. That was really cool. Right? Um, everything. He had everything just and the, and perfectly just, just mapped the, out. The balls of Kingpin to get stabbed in the throat. Chuck a, you know, a, a dump. He was going to kill that dude. Yeah, he was still, even though he planned throat. it, he was like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm not supposed to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Holding on his throat. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. I was like, that's D'Onofrio cool is oh, Vincent D'Onofrio is kingpin. It's amazing to see. So we get we get past the Karen. The, what'd you think about the Karen episode? Because the Karen episode was half too much Karen. Yeah, and then we got the church scene, right? Which was really cool. Yes, I thought, like you said, I could have done without all the Karen stuff. You could have called. You could have called the episode anything else done 15 minutes of Karen within a 53 minute show and I think that would have been Do you think she was going to die? Well we had already knew She doesn't. Didn't she say she, she did? She does not. She did. She did. She's a lying son of a bitch. I don't know if they just did that. When did it happen? When did she not die? Well, she, she doesn't die at all in the show. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm three, the last three episodes. Well, in the end, they're just sitting in a diner, all happy as peach pie, making, saying that we're going to be uh, Murdoch and Foggy. Nelson. Nelson and, Nelson Murdoch, and Murdoch and Paige. Page. They wrote Anne Page now, uh, and they're going to be a thing now. What is she? Well, honestly, Well, what that's is what she, she goes, she goes... I'm not a lawyer, guys. And he goes, well, you're a... And then Foggy says, you're a hell of an investigator. <laughs> and he goes, you're more well-rounded than Jessica Jones. And that was literally the last line that Daredevil had in the show. Was dropping a name drop of Jessica I Jones. Just to be like, listen, guys, we still have one show that's still going. <laughs> All right, so I, I honestly, like, I, I get pissed at Karen Page for the fact that I never knew what she did in the first place for that company that tried to kill her. Yeah. I never knew what she did. I don't think we're supposed I to. I never know. thought that she could have been a Journalist. secretary at oh, a law secretary, firm yeah. because that's a fucking intense job. You can't just walk into that. It's not like me walking into my job and now I'm doing it. It's like, that's not how it works. You got to understand then, law. And right. Shit, like. And then... Now she's, she's a, a journalist, all journalist. Also. full blown journalist. She gave him fucking what's his face's office. Ben Urich's yeah. office. She's running this shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I don't get and it. And now they're calling her an investigator at the end of season three. I, you know what I, you know, my hopes for Punisher season two is she fucking dies in that. I cannot believe she did not die in the season. Oh. I was so, pissed. if there's anything I was most pissed about was yeah. not only that final scene of them sitting there 
and they made the joke about Nelson Murdoch and Paige, yeah. and then him dropping Jessica Jones as his last line in the I season. I wish Jessica Jones would have fucking busted the door down and ripped off Karen Page's head and be like, now nah, who's better? Right, but <laughs> the fact that Karen Page made it the whole way to the end. Um, I don't like this. So after we get past the the uh, church episode, yes, we're building up to Fisk's wedding. Yes. Which, when we get to that wedding, man, I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm going there because I know you, you haven't watched it yet, but we got to go there. Do it. Holy mother of God! I am so ready for Daredevil to murder Fisk. Yeah. Like he, he's at the gym, and he wraps his hands in a bunch of fucking old ass jump ropes, and his hands are all fucking big, and he's just he sneaks in there, sets it up perfectly. He gets, uh. Poindexter all mm-hmm. riled up. He tells right. Poindexter, he calls him and gets him all riled up and then tells him that he needs to go to this address and look in the freezer. And he and he goes there and he finds the chick that he was obsessed with mm-hmm. that Kingpin murdered. Yeah. He finds her with a bullet in her head, frozen, mm-hmm. and, and uh, Daredevil convinces him that it was Kingpin that did it. So he puts the Daredevil suit on, goes to the wedding, goes straight to the parking garage, right up to the fucking security guards, dudes, wearing full fucking Daredevil suit with the frozen chick sitting in the passenger seat of the car and then just starts murdering people to get it to Wilson Fisk. So Daredevil not only has fake Daredevil on a hell-bent path to kill Fisk, he's also on his way to Fisk. So now he's got, he kind of has a little bit of backup. Double daredevil. My problem now that I'm thinking about that is once they get to Fisk, right? Once Fisk and once uh, Poindexter shows up at the ceremony and and they run and they go up to their penthouse, Daredevil's standing there waiting for them. Poindexter is trying to kill Fisk. Yeah. And now Daredevil is stopping. Poindexter the whole I fight know. from killing him. I so know. now you have a, a cool, it was an amazing fight. Right. Him fighting him, fighting him, stopping him from killing him, trying to beat him but not kill him was awesome. But now that I'm thinking about it, why did he tell him to go there in the first place yeah. if he was going to just try to stop him anyway? Yeah. Maybe he was trying to kill two birds with one stone, get him in the same place? Maybe. Because he did. Right. But so we get a true kingpin move. He he's fighting both of them. Vanessa's standing over there, like, oh, I got blood on me and all that stuff. And what? So what happened? Did we blow a fuse? No. Oh, my phone vibrated. Oh, <laughs> I heard something and I was like, oh shit. Oh, uh, anyway, I got a new follower. Oh, cool. Yeah. So anyway. Kingpin picks uh, Poindexter up and runs straight at a the corner of the brick wall mm. and snaps his back and bends him in half, basically, and then drops him on the ground. So he's done. And then he turns around and Daredevil just, them just start going at it. Daredevil beats the living hell out of him, and it is amazing. Yeah. Gets him down on his knees. He's just a bloody effing mess. Yeah. He has him just jacking him in the face about to kill him and Vanessa runs over and screams and says you know please stop and Kingpin's screaming at Daredevil to do it yeah that's that's and the, I'm like that's it right there I'm like fucking kill him <laughs> do it and he's beating me he's like oh. well, that's, that's the thing like if, if if Daredevil kills Kingpin Kingpin wins right and he he stops and he's doing that groan thing that, that uh whatever Cox does Cox man he does and he backs off a little bit and he he does the the primordial scream that the whole thing been going on through the whole season. He just primal, sc- primal, primal, primordial, whatever. The primordial. I ooze. know that's the thing that started it all. But whatever. Primal. <laughs> it's, it's still old. I let you slip the first time you said it. I couldn't time, remember I like, the no, word. I can't do that. But he screams in Fisk's <laughs> face, and then Fisk says, "You didn't kill me. You lose. I'm never. I'm going to kill everyone that you love. I'm never going to stop coming after you." Um, and then Daredevil just so perfectly like this awesome speech and says no you're not you're done if you do i'm never your your wife is fucked like i'm going to go after your wife 
Like, I'm not going to leave her. Like, he threatens her straight in front of Kingpin's face. And you could just see Kingpin, he just stops. And he goes, basically, makes a deal with him. Says, I'll go back to prison. I'll leave everyone that you love alone. I'll leave you alone as long as you leave Vanessa alone. And then they shake hands. And then he walks away. Yeah. And I'm like, like, it was better than him killing him. Yeah. The speech was amazing. Yeah. The, the, the... Does Kingpin keep his word? If we get... That's the thing, is after, after that, then the end of that episode was them getting arrested, him going back to dressing in a suit again, them doing the diner thing. So, like, it's wrapped up. But then they had to drop one last scene after the diner scene where they show Poindexter in surgery and they're doing, they have his whole spine open and they drop a name, the doctor, the one doctor's talking to the other doctor and he says, he's like, basically like, dude, this guy's paralyzed. He's fucked. And the one doctor, I can't remember his name, Con... Cornelius, not Cornelius, something like that. Okay. It's it's fucking Lady Death Strikes' yeah. father, yeah, who puts the adamantium into Bullseye's spine in the comic uh, books. But they can't use the word adamantium, so right. they make up some random ass name for the steel that he's putting into his spine. And then as they're doing the surgery, and he says that, and he says he's going to be better than he ever was, the camera like weirdly pans down to Bullseye's face, and his eyes open, and he's got the Bullseye rings. On his eyes. In his eyes. Hmm. And then it cuts off. That's the end. So now he is Bullseye. Bullseye. Now he's gotten the taste of the costume. Yeah. He's going to come back after Daredevil. He's right. going to put the costume on. He's got the Bullseye rings on his eyes. Does, does season four, Daredevil versus Bullseye, does Daredevil get the help of Kingpin to take down Bullseye? I don't know. Is that going to be something we're going to see? I hope not. <laughs> I know. Like, I want Kingpin to just keep. Yeah. Keep I want. Yeah. I want. Daredevil yeah. I want Kingpin. I want Kingpin to make sure Vanessa's safe and then totally fucking abandon his word. Like. I don't know. It was amazing. Yeah. The whole season was amazing. I. I best, really like. Is it the best season so far? Season one is fantastic. Yes. And I do have to say, season three had its dragging moments. Mm-hmm. It had those, holy shit, this is 13 episodes. Episodes doing like some filler episodes. You always, you always get that between like episodes seven and ten of a Netflix series. Karen was that. definitely a drag oh, episode, which Karen. they tried to make it like a pinnacle episode. Right. But they build it up to be the church scene. Yeah. And then you start the next episode and you get this... 45 minute long Karen flashback with a 15 minute church scene. So like, was it better than season one? It was, I don't think it, it was. It was, it, <clears throat> it is right now because it's new right. and I really enjoyed it. And there was some spectacular things that they definitely topped. Like yeah. I didn't think anything could top that hallway fight scene in the right. first one when he's fighting for the little girl. Right. Boy. Was it the little boy? It was a boy. Oh, okay. Somebody got kidnapped. But that prison scene will forever probably be one of the best choreographed fighting scenes I've ever seen yeah, in my I life. I can't wait to uh, read that article that you sent me. Oh, dude, it's and, so good. Uh, start, like, you know, yeah. get inside his mind. Uh, I think that it was not. I think season one was still the best. Oh, and I did also, back to what we talked about last week, I like how they kind of, uh, the suit... Dilemma. He didn't wear a suit at all. Yeah, I know. And I was okay with it. I know, right? Because like, right. his got torn up in the building falling on sewer escape. And then he puts back on the original. And it's like, I love that putting back on the original because it, it's that whole back to basics kind of thing. Yeah. Like, we got to learn how to crawl before we learn how to walk kind of thing. So, so. he get, Oh, how about the scene in episode one when he finally goes back out for the first time? Yeah. And he's letting yeah. the dudes beat the shit out of him and he gives the dude the pipe and yeah. asks him to kill him right i had chills yeah. i was like oh, I was, dude man. i was right there with you oh. i was like i was like wait a minute He's i was like, like whoa please just please and they're like and the dude's like should we kill him yeah, <laughs> like, you know, not like, waste time on this guy i thought that was really cool i thought you know him jumping back out there 
And even, you know... Him finding thought, out that Mother Maggie was... Maggie that was his mother. Right. Ugh. And I thought that the... Uh, one of the my favorite parts of the whole thing was in the beginning where the sound was shit on the show because you were hearing what yeah. Matt Murray You couldn't was hear saying. anything you that Maggie was saying. You couldn't hear anything. I'm like... I understand I you like, can't yeah, hear, I like, but to, I want to hear what you're saying. Help, way to help me understand, <laughs> you sons of bitches. No, I did like that. Yeah, that, I thought that, that was really classy. Was, I, I mean, in season two, that was probably one of the most, um, like, one of the best parts of that season was when he lost his hearing. Yes. Like, it was and one of the most was intense. So quiet. Because, yeah. you know, he's fucking blind. Yeah. Now he can't hear? Yeah. That's terrifying. Right. So for that to start off right into the season three with him losing his hearing coming in and out. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Go watch uh, Daredevil season three available on Netflix now. Yeah, dude. Uh, you will not be disappointed. No. Uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Strange Planet podcast. Oh, wait, no, hold on. I got to do this one more thing before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this every week until it happens. November 6th. Go vote. Vote, please. If you have been watching the news this week, we need it more than ever for you to go vote. Yeah, right? Like, you're fucking idiot Donald Trump doing stupid shit saying that it's okay for uh, a, a senator to beat up a journalist. It's okay for a country to kill an American residential journalist because he just doesn't give a fuck about you. Or, and like, he's saying that the Democrats are a mob. We're the angry mob now. Yeah, I don't fucking think so. You're, you're making everyone right? angry, I'll tell ba you that. Yeah, Baby Donald <clears throat> is not going to fucking run this country for that much longer. November 6th, go vote if you live in the United States. Please. We need it right now more than ever. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Strange Planet Podcast. We have been your hosts. This has been... Corey James. And I've been Anthony Zevitek. Have a strange day. <laughs>